There's a pervasive urban and rural myth that says once you have a criminal background, you can no longer vote. That's not true in the state of Colorado, and that's not true in most states around the country. In Colorado, we practice a level of temporary disenfranchisement. It's a suspension of one's voting rights. So what that means is if you are in a state of confinement for a felony conviction, you can't vote until you get out of confinement. Confinement could be um, a 30-day mandatory sentence as part of felony probation. So for those 30 days you're in confinement for felony probation, you wouldn't be eligible to vote. It means if you're in prison, you're not eligible to vote. It means if you're on parole, you're not eligible to vote. But the moment you're done with that DOC sentence and any additional time attached in the form of parole, you're eligible to vote. If you're in confinement, serving time as a pretrial detainee, meaning you've been charged and arrested and are awaiting trial, you're eligible to vote because you have not officially been convicted. If you are serving time in confinement for a misdemeanor conviction in the county jail, you are eligible to vote. This goes against popular belief that once you have a criminal background, you can no longer vote. That's only true in Florida, Kentucky, and Iowa. And those felony convictions have to come out of those states for them to apply. For example, if I'm convicted of a felony in Colorado and I move to Iowa, I can still vote in Iowa because the conviction did not come out of Iowa. State by state, the rules, the laws, the regulations are state by state. So are the consequences. In Colorado, if you register to vote or vote when you are ineligible, you are liable to be charged with a class five felony. In the states of Vermont and Maine, they practice zero levels of disenfranchisement, meaning folks can actually vote from prison in those states. Colorado recently passed a bill, SB 150, that would mandate there's a process put into place in every judicial district across the state that has people who are eligible to register to vote and vote happening in every county jail and detention center across the state. One thing we need to understand is that this pervasive urban and rural myth that once you have a criminal background, you can no longer vote has contributed significantly to the marginalization and disenfranchisement of a serious voter block, a voter block that could sway elections a voter block that deserves to be heard and the constitutional rights of people who have been caught up in the criminal justice system. We are people, we have a voice, and our vote matters. My vote matters, your vote matters. 2018 is a significant election year for the state of Colorado. Our attorney general, our Secretary of State, our Governor, half our Senate, and all of our House Representatives are up for election. These are people that draft, craft, and pass laws that impact our experiences in confinement and also in the community. These are also people who are not used to having such a large voting block paying attention to not only their views as political figures, but who are showing up to the polls who are educated on your views, voting for the next person who's gonna fill the seat in that office. So I would encourage folks who live in the state of Colorado or who live across the country to know what your voting rights are in the state that you live in. Learn and know who's running for these offices that impact our lives directly. More importantly, be the change you wanna see in your community. The time is now, so get out to vote.